Uh, welcome, friends. Uh, welcome to this edition of our uh, session on entrepreneurship. It's, uh, it's been a good seven and a half years of journey, which we which we have also completed. Uh, we thought it's again the right time to uh, bring the subject back, given the changes that are happening in the uh, in the market, in the regulatory environment. Uh, there are a lot of questions, and but we were also having this chat. Uh, on what should be our larger topic on uh, in our in our in our Bharat FinTech Summit, which is again scheduled for 2025, Feb 2025. Uh, and one of the questions which a lot of VCs have sent us is, uh, it to invest or not to? Okay, that's a larger question which everybody is asking. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I thought it's again time on how do you, you know, how do you get back into this entrepreneurial uh, journey? Uh, how do you plan for it? Uh, what are the key elements, ingredients, uh, uh, given that this is a highly regulated industry? Uh, so that's the whole purpose of doing this uh, this session today. Um, so I'm with me, uh, joined with me by Vikrant, who is a part of my team, uh, uh, my colleague who handles uh, our all our consulting engagements. So some of the knowledge which we draw into these sessions are also from his team uh, that they contribute to what we do in the market. Um, so for for those who have joined us for the first time, very quickly we are a digital based kind of consulting firm, uh, specially focused on the BFSI side. Uh, we're trying to build a viable Indian alternative uh, consulting firm. That's the whole um, uh, aim with which we started our entrepreneurial journey. Uh, and um, uh, coincidentally, I completed five years here uh, while we are a seven year old firm. For one year, I was supporting from outside, but. Officially, I completed five years uh, just two days back. And I realized this is my first place where I've done a five-year stint. I've never done anywhere else. So finally, it had to be my own company where I could do a five-year stint. Uh, is there enough challenges, enough trials and tribulations? Uh, you struggle to make it. Uh, and and um, it's worth it. Uh, it is worth it. So the so a uh, well, lot of people say welcome to the dark side, dark world. Don't go with that dark logo that we have in the and in the side panel. Um, uh, it's it's very challenging, very interesting. Um, given that you enjoy the process, it's not uh, and and uh, end results also do come in. Um, so uh, so yeah, this is our core team. Uh, uh, Samir, myself, uh, Shashank, and then Vikrant. We we run this. I. At the entire sales partnerships marketing my Bharat Fintech Summit event, um, so I uh, I try to get in the get in the customers and these guys deliver it and then together we have been trying to make it. Uh, the journey has been good so far. We are now a twenty five member team. Uh, I mean, given that uh, it it was started by a one man vision uh, to a twenty five member team, we are very very happy at where we are. Next, uh, so we'll skip this. Let's move to the next one. So, so, uh, and this is this is a commendable thing that we always like to showcase, right? We have done, uh, given our pedigree, none of us are from consulting background. We have all been practitioners. Um, Samir, Shashank, and Vikrant have come from the banking side on the technology companies. I personally came uh, from media sales, um, uh, marketing side. Uh, given that uh, that background, um, we have built it uh, brick by brick. Uh, and then that's where we are. A good 100 projects executed, <clears throat> good 70 odd customers. Uh, and it's not just India, you will see, see in the next slide. Um, next slide. Um, so, this is the customer base. I mean, anybody who has a question on any one of them, I'm happy to run, uh, run through what we have done, right? So, uh, from consulting, uh, building strategies to them to uh, to helping them in executing it, somewhere implementation support, uh, somewhere a larger strategic input in how do they build and go in and and then you know and growth phase. Uh, some of the interesting logos, if you see on the right side, like a money control, the media company which has come to us asking us on how they can become a fintech. Uh, and I'm very very proud of this work that we have done over the last seven seven and a half years. Um, so that's where we stand, and we are seeing. Uh, from early stage startups to funded startups to now we have seen a lot of small banks working with us and we are now at a stage where we are also working with large entities. Uh, we have our first large bank, which we just cracked a you know, couple of weeks back. We have a large NBFC, which we have just signed up. Uh, we've done a large assignment again in Africa for one of the largest uh, microfinance companies in the world. So this 
all of this is what gives us some some amount of confidence that maybe maybe we can talk about this subject but otherwise um, this is not one of the easiest subjects to talk how do you, you know somebody else become an entrepreneur uh, but yeah uh, uh, i mean as we always do whatever we do on the consulting side is what we you know we build as a decks for the training uh, whatever is our learnings on the entrepreneurship and running you know trying to build this business is what we are trying to do what we are trying to you know pass on this knowledge as as uh, as this uh, session on how do you become an entrepreneur and what makes it uh, need to be a, a successful entrepreneur so this is what we covered and i mean if you see uh, we've been lucky to get clients from across we got from middle east jordan is something that we have done we're done in africa we're done in us india we've been spread across we have done in myanmar um, so we've been uh, we've been pretty pretty um, uh, lucky in that sense uh, uh, so for some we do core consulting for some we do uh, consulting which could be building uh, the product development stage uh, for some we work on uh, gtm for some we work on uh, implementation work for some we are doing um, uh, you know uh, getting their digital uh, infrastructure right uh, tech infrastructure right so most of the work uh, is what we are doing. Uh, barring doing uh, very core development work, we, we basically focus on rest everything and anything else. And this is uh, one of our second largest uh, you know, uh, event in the country. Uh, besides, if, the, if you take out the government support as a private entity, I think this is the largest event in the country, uh, Bharat Fintech Summit. Uh, we are very, very proud of this, uh, this, this baby. Uh, it is uh, it's two years old now, um, and as we speak, we are planning for the third day, third birthday on 5th and 6th of Feb next year. Um, this will be, again, uh, a star-studded event. Uh, some of the best industry practitioners, uh, they dwell into it. And somebody asked me, why is your event successful? And we said, you know, a lot of events actually focus on macro when, when, when media and others, when they do events, and they focus on bringing in an RBI governor or a finance minister. The focus is always on the macro topics, right? But what industry wants, at least in this side, and what any one of you who wants to become an entrepreneur is to listen on the micro side of it. Uh, micro side of what is the real points, if, you know, focus areas of the banks, of any NBFC, and on the regulation side, payment side, or any other aspect uh, where you guys can be, all of us together can build solutions and then implement it. And what are the challenges? Right? The people are waiting to listen to answers for this. And who else... Uh, who better than these guys who are, you know, some of the pictures that you see on this frame to answer what is the industry looking for. So that's the reason why this event has become extremely successful. With your blessings, we'll try to make it even bigger next year. So, so I've, I've covered this, so we'll kind of uh, skip uh, these slides now and then uh, I think get to the meat of the, uh, uh, the content, you know, what we're actually trying to uh, cover in this right so um, so so first thing what we'll try to do is uh, give a kind of overview on what is entrepreneurship all about um, and while a while, lot of you guys are practitioners of the trade you would have done your MBAs also uh, recently or early on uh, depending upon at what age uh, you guys are sitting in all those joinees uh, how much gray hair you have like me or Vikrant uh, or otherwise uh, but the fact is, um, some of the fundamentals remain the same: price, product, place, uh, all of that. Uh, but in a in a in a uh, in an industry like ours, which is highly regulated, uh, also where uh, product differentiation is extremely difficult, um, technology gives you only so much of leverage. Uh, how do you get this right? How do you uh, get your act right? Is something very very critical. Uh, business models again, right? I mean, um, we have seen uh, at least in this last seven years, I have seen a lot of startups not making it big because uh, the pricing models are not right. Uh, somewhere they falter. Um, uh, I mean, with no offense to any of the customers, right, who has joined us here, right? They get carried away by the first feedback that your product is great, and then they start thinking that I can, uh, I can do a dollar pricing in India. Uh, which is very, very difficult. Uh, this typical foot-in-the-door philosophy of what a lot of techie guys bring into the market. Uh, so, so those are some of the things that we need to realize on how do you get this act right very early in the game. Uh, because this also then decides and determines your pipeline, uh, your projections uh, for internal revenues, your projections 
for investments, for fundraising and all of that. Uh, so this is an extremely critical factor. Then how do you approach to raise funds? And I've seen, uh, we are running an accelerator, the first one which we launched in this year in our Bharat Fintech Summit. Uh, one of the critical questions which under, which a lot of in investors look into uh, in, you know, while investing is the attitude of the, of the founders, uh, the team uh, composition and all of that. We'll cover more of this in detail as we go into the next slides. But some of these things are very, very critical. So, and another key success factor, right? You do an MVP, you get your first label, then what happens next? So these are some of the things that we're going to cover. So basic definition, we just try to define, but you know, uh, it's fundamentally try to initiate a new business, you know, uh, and you know, we all believe it's a unique approach. Uh, very early in the game is when we need to find out whether is the approach unique or not. Uh, that's extremely critical. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I just wanted to figure out, am I audible, right? If somebody can raise their hand and say that I'm audible properly. I know I'm, I'm asking this question a little late into the session, but I just wanted to figure out. Guys, am I audible? Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Rajiv. That's perfect. Yeah. So, uh, so some of the three P's, right? Uh, like place, product, and pricing of marketing. These are three, you know, uh, three pieces which is very, very critical. Uh, one is people, plan, and process. Um, uh, product uh, also. Right, uh, and process is a part of the product, but people is extremely, extremely critical. Uh, how do you, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of these questions. One of the weightages that I've seen uh, when it comes to investments also is when they see, are you a loaner or you, do you have co-founders? Uh, then uh, do you have, uh, uh, do you have the, uh, the multi-talented team that it takes? Um, so that's, that's very, very important for anyone uh, you know, to, to invest. That's very, very, very critical. So I was, I was looking at this entire analogy, right? I mean, uh, I was also listening to some, uh, uh, so one of the things that I, that I figured out was why, uh, you know, a five member Pandavas were more successful to a hundred member Kauruvas is basically, if you look at the team composition, uh, I mean, I mean that the, the, the first one is 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 a diplomat. The second one is a warrior with a different type of skill sets, hand to hand combat. The third one is with a different skill sets, missile guy. The fourth one it knows, you know, the I think the two things that were very very critical those days are probably horses and cows, right? Uh, so the other two brothers were extremely talented. I mean, that's a multi uh, multi talented, uh, you know, team composition that they had. Uh, whereas if you see on the other side, you always had only one type of warriors and warriors. Um, the good guys and, and probably not so good guys, but it was just warriors. They didn't have that multi-talent. Uh, so that's very, very critical. Uh, one of the key things that we have figured out very early is how do you get this people composition very, very right. Um, we try to bring in talent uh, which, which supplements us. Uh, the, not, not, not just complement us and or, 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 you know, there's a delta to what we have. Uh, so well-rounded team is very, very critical. Uh, second thing is, uh, as an entrepreneur, when you're starting uh, very new, uh, recruitment is a big challenge. Uh, recruitment is a big challenge. Uh, uh, and uh, the initial few recruits also define your culture. Uh, how do you ensure that you work along with them to build the right culture? Uh, and again, a typical, uh, I think somebody raised a hand, uh, Prasad. Is there a question? Oh, no problem. Okay. So, so one of the things that we also realized at our side, right? Uh, I mean, again, if you look at our core team, um, Vikrant joined recently, what, one and a half years into the system? Uh, so Vikrant joined us very recently. Otherwise, it's me, Samir, and Shashank, rightly, right? Uh, and we are all um, uh, our minimum uh, average minimum age is around 45 46 uh, and my team is um, in their early 20s 22 23 to 26 27 uh, I, I mean uh, i think there there are at least eight to nine generation gaps in between this so how do you build a culture which uh, which what we have seen the ethics that we bring to the uh, to the market uh, to the table uh, the ethics that these kids bring, uh, the commitment and um, the long hours that we we plan 
to the work life balance that these guys demand um fostering culture is an extremely critical factor and it's a daily learning process there is no answer to it uh, so that's that's what we've been trying to figure out training is again very very critical because um, b schools teach only so much we learned only so much uh, so the learning are all sides and especially uh, uh, whatever you are building in this particular segment right and I, what i've seen is um, it's if, if while you say i am building a reg tech you still need to know the entire banking piece and um, somebody says i am building a product an los you still need to know what is the overall banking because multiple threads connect to the to the to this end process of what you are building for uh, so training so so in that sense whomsoever you recruit might not be an all rounder so, but you still have to give him that complete uh, grounding because in digital ultimately a, 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 in an all-rounder is always required. A jack of all is suddenly becoming very, very critical in this segment. Uh, so that's another crucial factor which we have seen is very, very important. Ethical integrity, because uh, at least from our side as a consulting firm, what we have seen is uh, we are privy to a lot of data, lots and lots of data. Uh, unless we have that ethical integrity, we can't trust people with the, you know, with the information. Uh, we can't grow. Uh, the same would happen with any one of you who is building up, uh, up the, their own fintech, right? So that's on the people side. On the plan side, you know, uh, very early, a uh, lot of people we have seen is uh, put up a product plan. Uh, uh, in the hierarchy, we see for us product is the third, not the second. Uh, one of the key reasons is uh, business plan is very, very critical. Uh, 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 I uh, will cover some of these nitty gritties in the future, in the future slides, uh, upcoming slides. But the fact is that you need to know what is the business potential for what you are building. Um, you might be a three member, four member friendly uh, group, which is sitting and doing all the coding and, and you might not feel that there is a money outflow, hence nothing is lost. Uh, but there is a value to everything. Uh, there, is a, there is a time value uh, which you need to uh, factor in. Uh, to that sense, it should not come as a shocker to any one of you guys at a later stage when you're building something that what you've built is a me too product and uh, the business uh, you know potential is limited and it's a hard way up the hill. Uh, that actually uh, that actually uh, you know Geopard is the entire growth plan. Marketing end is extremely critical. Uh, very early we have realized our only way is, to grow is is marketing uh we as a, again as i said right we are none of us are from consulting background all practitioners with our own backgrounds so what we realized is marketing is very very critical and to that extent we have uh, we have decided uh, uh, you know to use to make best use of the linkedin uh, platform and I, I, would, I would i would say today we are you know whatever we have done is purely through that platform also uh, you guys are here uh, also through that and, and and at some point of time we have built our own mailer base um, and a connected thing is your sales strategy um, so again connected to it would be your pricing strategy would be your approach strategy which market to attend which market to attempt uh, given your uh, your 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 bleak, you know your lean team so all of that becomes extremely critical uh, scalability and growth at some point of time in your very early days, you should realize is there a scalability to this or how do we do a you know, pivot from what we are doing. Uh, so these are some of the very, very critical factors. Financial planning obviously is very, very important. Uh, you should know how much funds you have in your kitty and how to make the best use of it. Um, because finally, that makes you finally, uh, the, the money in your, in, your, in your account actually decides uh, do you have to recruit or do you have to retrench? Uh, how much money you can put on marketing? Uh, what, where you can splurge, where you cannot? It's a whole lot of stuff depends on that. So financial planning is very critical. You might, I, and I hear a lot of guys saying, yeah, mere paas accounts ka banda nahi hai. We also had that situation, right? And we had, um, so finally, Shashank became our CFO. Uh, as as Vikrant has become as our, you know, by HR head. Uh, so this is how things happen in a in a in a, in a lean setup, and this is very very critical. Uh, the third thing, as it comes, is the product part of it, uh, which is uh, the production services that you are looking to develop. Uh, what is a unique proposition and research and development methodology? IP protection obviously comes, but that comes at a much later stage. 
uh, what is very, very critical is your product and services. We'll go very deep into what you should be doing in a product planning and all of that in our upcoming slides. So, uh, but before all of that, right, uh, the larger question which everybody has is when do I become an entrepreneur? Is it the age of 30? Is it the age of 40? 45, how much money in your kitty is before you take the plunge? Um, you know, what is the family willing to go with it? Uh, what is how do you what is your EMI management plan? Um, and there's many, many other things, right? You know, but uh, some of the people also think do I have the right degree? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, but uh, but the, a lot of other things, right? Your socioeconomic, uh, you know, uh, factors actually may, you know, may make a lot of difference in this decision making. Uh, and uh, and one thing is for sure is work life balance definitely goes for a toss. So it's a much bigger decision. What we have seen is uh, 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 in the last seven eight years since I've been on this side is a lot of people uh, within the industry look at an opportunity and that they think they can come out and then build something and then make a big buck, it doesn't happen. It always doesn't happen while we all believe that we have friends in the industry sitting on the other side, on the buying side. The moment you come onto the selling side, your, your ability to sell to your own friends is difficult. Their ability to purchase something from you is also difficult. We need to factor in that, right? This, this basic thing is never factored in. We say, oh, we not got the support, but that's not really true. Uh, uh, we and we have been facing that. I mean, uh, when we do our events and all, we have the best of the industry people coming into the room. Are we able to sell to all of them? No. Uh, the evaluation takes its own sweet time, uh, and 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 it's a very very uphill task. Next. Uh, and in the final word, right? What if I fail? What if I fail? Nobody has an answer. There are some people uh, who are. Uh, so again, if I give a Mahabharata analogy, right, you know, um, Duryodhana failed actually in, in, in fighting Pandavas four or five times before the final war. So some are headstrong, some go ahead and then uh, they might succeed. Some after multiple failures come back. Uh, you need to be, you need to know your limits. Would I be able to come back? And at what age? You start at 40, you fail at 50, then will you be able to come back to the industry? Uh, uh, will will the industry um, going to forgive you, but then still value your learnings and uh, and all of that? These are very very critical factors. Uh, uh, but then yes, what if I fail? You always need to be continuously thinking about it, and that's what actually uh, you know gives you a lot of sleepless nights, not anything else. So some facts and uh, myths uh, of entrepreneurship, you know, uh, all of these things, right? Like. Um, we are all born entrepreneurs, nothing like that. I never, never, ever thought I will become a co-founder of any company. Never. Uh, and also, given the fact that I'm not from a technology or a banking background, uh, I never even thought, uh, you know, so so for me, it was, uh, it was happenstance. It happened. I took the plunge. Uh, the other factor is on the, on the fact side. Uh, one thing which is a, which is a recent research that has come out and a lot of people have talked about is, is the most successful entrepreneurs are in the age group of 45 to 50. Uh, it's, it's a big myth that you know you need to be young and reckless. That's not really true. Some of the people who have done it really good and really well are people who started at the age of 45, 50. Sometimes gray hair keeps you grounded. Uh, established you know, firms cannot be entrepreneurial, but if you see off late, lot of established firms are actually hiving off, putting up smaller units and making it big. Uh, so anything can be possible. It, again, as I said, right, that people plan product and process uh, and discipline. These are some of the things that will that will either make you a successful guy or, or entrepreneur or not. So uh, some of the characters of an entrepreneur, uh, I'll try to relate it to what I do. Uh, be creative. I doubt I am. Uh, uh, but then it's it's an evolution, right? It's a process that you need to build in. Uh, 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 that's one of the reasons why in our recruitment process, we have a lot of uh, youngsters where we believe they come up with this entire thinking outside, out of the box thinking mindset. And then they give us this, uh, they, you know, uh, they, they lend us the support. Uh, on, on doing some kind of you know experimentation so we give them a free hand to think 
um, and then we try to experiment with their thoughts. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But then that's 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 a challenge one has to live with, right? Diversity again is is part of experimentation. Um, what the way again? Um, uh, so 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 again. Uh, from a services company to a product company, there are maybe some limitations. Um, a services company can build micro offerings and then see how they can sustain, like how we have done. Uh, if you look, if, if you have, um, uh, you know, remember our earlier slide, we have training, we have events, we have consulting, something clicks. But in a product company, you can't be coding 500 products at one time. Um, so within the product, uh, so when you're building a product, you need to be very, very clear on what we are building for and also figure out how you can build it granularly so that there is some revenues coming in. But obviously, so 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 that diversity in business planning uh, and all of that actually has to come in very early. Um, the third thing, always see challenges as opportunities. This is a very off statement, stated line, but you don't have a choice. As I said, right, I've seen many a people who thought they can just walk back into their previous organizations and the sale is there on the table. It doesn't happen. Uh, but then you need to take it as an opportunity uh, for growth rather than feeling frustrated about it. Uh, I mean, you, you can have irritation, you can have many, many things, but what you cannot have is an entrepreneur is frustration. Uh, that's the last thing. Uh, I, I mean, so, so the, to, to answer one of the earlier questions, right, what do you have failed or when to get back? Is the day you start feeling frustrated, I think that's the time you should look back to getting into your job. Uh, collaborate is very, very important. I mean, that's something which you have learned very, very early in our trade is um, there are a lot of friends and well-wishers try to collaborate, uh, not to compete. A uh, uh, lot of people think uh, they are all in the same space, but actually no. Uh, I can give many, many examples of this, but collaboration actually works. Uh, again, on the other side, focus is... Uh, when you're building a product, especially uh, where to prioritize, what to prioritize, uh, and ask help, seek clarity. Um, yeah, go back. Uh, there is there is a slide on network that we networking that we have in the in 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 the future slides. Uh, but seek clarity very very early. Go back to the industry. Go back and talk to your friends. Talk to the industry guys. Uh, this is especially for the youngsters. If we are building something, go back, go back and seek clarity. Are you on the right direction? Many a times when we are coding something, we are in love with our own baby and we feel that we are doing great stuff. But at, when, 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 the, when the MVP gets into the market, we are in for a root shock that there is already this, this product existing and we are one of the me too guys. So seek clarity. Uh, that helps. Um, uh, be humble with it. There is nothing wrong in it. That's what my simple advice is. And, and set, set your goals and test and iterate is again what I just said, right? So clarity and test and iterate is what goes hand in glove. Uh, you keep testing. Testing is not just uh, doing a code testing, right? You go back and ask the market. Uh, business validation is also very, very critical. So that's where you see clarity, come back, iterate it, and then go back and then see clarity. Uh, then... The moment you move beyond, okay, I think I've been going on a quite a bit of a monologue. If there are any questions somewhere in between, we can also make it, uh, you know, bi-dimensional, right? We can we can keep taking questions in between. So if there's any any question anywhere, I'd be happy to take it. Because a lot of it, you know, is will be very generic stuff, not something that you wouldn't have read in any of the blogs or any of the YouTube videos. If none, then I'll continue. But yeah, otherwise, if there's something, any question that I'll be happy to uh, take it. None? Great. So we move on. Uh, uh, as I said, right, understanding your customer pitch is critical. Okay. Uh, so I think my colleague has put up a feedback form uh, in the chat box. Uh, please share your feedback on on the content presentation uh, and, and about us also. We are doing good job or good stuff or not. It, it is useful for us to improve our next presentation. Um, so as I said, right, getting a pitch deck right is very, very critical. And again, uh, uh, taking a cue from the previous slide, um, seek clarity. That's where you get your pitch deck also, right? Uh, this deck is not just for the customers. It's also for your, uh, for your potential investors. Uh, extremely critical. Uh, a lot of, lot of times we try to make it 
too techno 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 functional uh, that we forget our audience please understand when we are trying to sell anything back to the regulated entity there is a business team there is a product team there is an ops team there is a tech team uh, and there are many many other teams senior management board and depending upon what you are pitching and at what level are you trying to pitch uh, it's extremely critical uh, we need to know the audience to customize it or keep it simple and uh, uh, and and free flowing that people understand it a lot of times i see business doesn't happen because we try to use some fancy words uh, for as simple as as you know uh, probably giving a uh, you know bank statement analyzer you know uh, solution or a kyc uh, and then and then we, we see uh, you know uh, you know the other side perceiving it to be some kind of a some tech jargon and then say we are redirected to to talk to our cto uh, cto is not going to decide your video kyc it will be the product head uh, and if they see merit uh, and scalability, they will ask the CTO or the team to tech team to kindly evaluate it, right? So these are some of the very, very critical things that you need to know. Um, this looks very simple, but uh, trust me, getting our pitch deck right is not easy. I probably would have made 17 iterations to my own you know, my own corporate deck. We still don't have it right. A lot of people perceive us as event organizers. A lot of people perceive us as trainers. Uh, a lot of people perceive us as 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 you know as network enablers. Uh, very few think of us as consultants, but but we are trying to get it right. So that can go right wrong for a lot of people. Okay, and handling rejections is as I said right. Uh, uh, you can get irritated, but you can't get frustration over there. Uh, you need to. Uh, I, uh, uh, you know that famous dialogue from uh, Gone with the Wind, right? Tomorrow is another day. You need to have that attitude. You need to come back and say, uh, okay, tomorrow is another day. There is better, uh, you know, um, things are going to happen better for tomorrow. And then you need to come back. Uh, and then, as I said, a lot of these things, again, come back into this, right? Is there the tech going wrong? Uh, is the team not supporting? And a lot of other things that keep happening. Uh, keep looking at those basic stuff day in and day out and day in and day out uh, to ensure that uh, we are at it, uh, at it, and in the, in the we are in the process. We don't step out. You can't be on the periphery. You need to be inside in the nuclei to to, to know what is happening. Uh, and one of the things which I like about my uh, my other partner Samir is he is glued to each and every person within the organization, right? And he knows what's happening at what time. He can actually read the 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 the, the, the trials and tribulation, the frustrations on the face, and then and then he connects with them. Uh, that's extremely critical. Discipline, uh, uh, I can I can actually talk to Reams about it. Uh, somebody coming from a media sales background, uh, doing whatever stuff to running a consulting firm uh, for BFSA segment, I've come a long way in, in discipline. Um, from indiscipline to discipline, removing the two words as, is, is still an uphill task which I'm trying to work upon. Uh, exercise and maybe someday I will we'll do a session on how to uh, how to remove that in from indiscipline to discipline. Um, but yeah, stick to your goals, come back with your milestones and uh, milestones and timelines. Um, a lot of times what happens is when you are in a lean team, uh, timelines goes for a toss because priorities are always shifting. Uh, and and this is very very important you know more so important when you're doing a product development um, suddenly you have a somebody wants to do a POC and then th those things takes uh, the precedence because POC me kisi ne kuch or extra mang liya your your dev team is working there whereas your sales team is asking something else so these are the things that are very very critical uh, again um, uh, resilience may uh, we have already covered it right embrace failures. Uh, I've seen largest of the uh, you know tech startup enablers doing presentations. You know, you have to round of uh, presentations in four days or four days. Getting that four demos you know, from, from influencer to decision maker to the CTO, CEO, all of that happens within 30 days. Your decision making takes 300 days, if you are lucky, at times. Um, I just had one, uh, you know, success after five years. Uh, that's on the extreme side. It can take more years also. Uh, given the fact that I'm not working with, or I'm probably working hardly with 15, 17% of the overall banking fraternity in the country. 
um, I may take another five, seven years to crack them. So that's a 10 year journey, which you're talking about. Uh, so embracing failure is extremely critical in this. Uh, positive mindset comes as part of it, embracing failure. So um, I think we've covered that. Um, risk taking is something very, very critical. Um, um, uh, I mean, when we were launching Bharat Fintech Summit last to last year, um, say probably 2022 November, that was the biggest question on our mind, should we do it or not? Uh, you need to take calculated risk. You need to evaluate your success factors, whether you can do it or not, but that's very, very critical. Uh, sometimes when to pivot, uh, if it is not too much of an effort, when to do that, and then when to take the calculated risks. Risks need not be doing a lot of product pivoting and all of that. Uh, buying your early labels, should you want, do you want to pick it up free? A uh, lot of people don't do that uh, because they have to then, and if you're already, a, you know, whether it is angel round or, or slightly, you know, elevated round of funding, uh, you always dread going back to the investors and saying that I bought this first two labels free. Uh, but it takes courage. Uh, I, we would explain, we, we will encourage all of you guys to go ahead for it. Uh, it actually works. Your conviction is what will make the investors also accept to your decision making. Uh, if you don't have it, then it is a difficult uphill task. So that's very, very critical. So some of these things which you're, you know, covered, right? Attention to detail and all of that, which is, you know, staying focused, staying on the milestones and all of that is extremely critical. Uh, but more importantly, I would like to spend some time on social skills. Uh, a lot of people I have seen are not networked, especially especially the techie side of it who have just come out of the colleges. Uh, they are not so well glued to what's happening. Uh, we don't go, if we don't network, we don't know what is the opportunity and when to pivot, what to do. Uh, experimentation and all of that, right? So social networking is very, very important. Uh, uh, attend a lot of industry events you will get to know what's happening you'll get to pick up the buzzword so if you are not yet started building something that's where you start with on what to build get uh, you know get a fair understanding of what are the problem statements uh, but you already started building that's where your validation also can happen uh, and then as I said right keep asking questions seek clarity keep asking questions seek clarity that's where attending those events you know will get you a uh, lot of uh, 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 you know, a lot of inputs. Uh, so we've tried to call out some of them, right? I mean, today you have an opportunity to connect with an RBA Innovation Hub. Uh, you can subscribe to the newsletters. There's something happening in Bits Pilani, ICICI Bank does something. Uh, in fact, we are very lucky. We are part of the NPCI Propel activity where they are where they are talking to, you know, uh, the FinTech uh, founders. Uh, again, what they are covering is what I'm co covering today, but they are probably covering for very, you know, very curated 15 fintechs, um, startup founders, right, is how do you get it right? Because we all know this is a highly regulated industry, a highly regulated segments, guidelines keep changing every often, um, business models are changing in a digital world, cyber security is actually posing a larger problem. So, so is cyber security a way to go, you know, you know, clear cut definitions of what is red tech and all of that. So a lot of things get actually answered there and then you can figure out depending upon your own core competency, uh, where to uh, where to invest your time and energy and what to build. So this is extremely critical. So some of the, we just try to call out few options here. There are many, many in the, in the market. I mean, I think one thing we missed is City Hub, uh, Telangana government, right? Extremely popular. You know, they're, they're shaping up future of a lot of people. Very recently I heard Chandigarh uh, Technical University, Punjab Technical University has got a, a very good accelerator running um, and, and they are fostering a lot of innovation over there, right? So these are the places where figure out whichever is nearest to you, try to be a part of it, go attend some events. A uh, lot of your, your start, your um, uh, co-working spaces, I, we work out of 91 Springboard here. A uh, lot of these co-working spaces does weekend activities. Uh, industry experts come and talk on certain things. Please be a part of it you know, that's where you can seek more clarity, ask questions and get answered because that's the place where a lot of these guys are also come there with an intent to talk and, and then interact. You go to a customer's place in their office, you pitch and you come back, they will give you yes, no, probably, or maybe, but here they will answer, you know, a lot more questions. So, so try to be a part of this. Networking is extremely critical. 
So again, uh, uh, my colleague has posted this link for NPCI Propel. This is happening sometime towards September. Uh, while this is a South Zone activity, we are doing this in Chennai. Uh, but nevertheless, if you want to be a part of it, you can uh, apply for it. The link is there or you can maybe share it with somebody who is actually trying to build something uh, and, and, and try to get this understanding because a lot of mentors, including the leadership team from NPC and otherwise, a lot of other industry experts, uh, ex-RBI, DPD governor kind of people also will be there. So that's, the, so, so, uh, so, uh, so, so far we have covered what actually uh, defines the characteristic and what you should be and doing and what you should not be doing. Uh, here is what we try to capture what should be the day of an entrepreneur. Um, so again, uh, uh, before going any further, I just wanted to figure out any questions, happy to answer. Uh, because we can make it interactive also, need not be a one-way bombardment. Is my actually utna hai bhi nahi one-way bolne ke liye, sir. Yes, sab aapko pata hi hoga. And I'm thankful for all of those guys who are listening to me, but uh, nothing is you not be lowing, right? But anything that you want uh, to ask, Is it audio enabled? All right. So, uh, so we move on. Um, so technically, uh, what you should be doing, right? Because given that when you start as a one-man army or you are a lean team, um, what takes precedence and what, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, how do you plan your day uh, also determines your success. Uh, typically, the way we have envisaged is uh, understanding market dynamics and then HR is what you focus initially while the percentages are low. Uh, planning is definitely a major factor. Sales and marketing. These are the four or five things that are very, very critical. Uh, and as you start growing, finance management actually starts taking uh, precedence. Um, and as you grow, in, as you start getting more and more labels, uh, monitoring and stakeholder management you know, takes precedence. Uh, because uh, if you're not monitoring what's happening on the delivery side, you are into problems. Uh, and when you're working with multiple customers, uh, with the way, especially with, with for, for people like us, right, with a lean team and with a young team, stakeholder management across all customers actually becomes a very, very critical factor. Uh, finally, it all then delves down to execution, right? You know, if you, if you get all the other elements right and you execute it right, you are ensured, uh, you are definitely in for success. Yep. So, uh, so some bit of forward thinking, you know, I think a recap of what we said, right? Uh, leave here, you go, uh, don't solve your problem, you don't care about, live in the future and all of this. Uh, while this is all there, uh, one of the things which is very, very critical is uh, how do you rewire yourself before you become an entrepreneur, right? Um, so one thing that I have, we have all learned uh, uh, very early is... Uh, Corporate mein hoto, to aapko har 30th ko jab salary aa jati, it's a different feeling. Here you're not guaranteed. Right. Uh, you don't know when the customer is even going to pay you, even if you have done some work, you got your first label. So being frugal is very, very important. This also has got social impact or uh, economic impact at your family. Uh, suddenly, when you say nahi, not this restaurant will 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 scale down. Uh, it has its own impact, but then you need to be frugal. Uh, the same mentality you bring to the office also. You need not go for fancy offices. Uh, there is no need to have uh, you know corner uh, rooms for your office, right? We might we might be used to it in our corporate life. Uh, flexibility is very very critical. Um, and this uh, personally, I I will vouch for this. Uh, from a highly inflexible mind as a very, very hardcore sales guy to the kind of flexibility that I, at least I've re realized that it is very, very critical, is, uh, is, is, is very, very important. Bias for action, you need to come committed to the office. Uh, it, it, it just kills you. What happened the day before kills you, but as I said, right, tomorrow is another day and bias for action, you need to plan for your it. And then start learning fast. Uh, if you're not a fast learner, think about what you're doing. Extremely critical. Uh, optimist and then all of that. Idea factory, you know, all surround yourself. Okay, one other thing that I've seen, right? Me and Samir were two-man army when uh, very early days before others came on board. Uh, there were many a days when one of us was there in the office and the other was actually out trying to meet somebody and other things, right? Uh, in a co-working space, you get to meet more people also. 
you can actually turn them into an idea factory you can turn them uh, you know into good conversations so that's that's the place where you can become proactive get some conversation starters talk to people who have spent time in industry and see how you can actually work along with them they could be your potential co-founders also at some point of time or your potential cto potential cfo potential hr head uh, your external auditor it could be anything right so so idea factory need not be in your own brain um so we will have to figure out where do we get those ideas from uh, and then be proactive and then react to and then be quick to what you build and then you need to have that builder attitude yep so as i said right look around uh, look into your area of expertise is definitely in but if you're, uh, I mean, living in this BFSA world, you know the overall universe, right? Within banking, NBFC, and within, uh, uh, as I said, your wealth and insurance or all of that. So you will know the, uh, you, you will know your area of expertise. You will know the ecosystem. But to take a cue, you need to look around. Uh, I mean, one of the ideas which, which one of my partners has been having is how do we build a lending product for housewives? Uh, nobody has solved it, right? But that's a brilliant idea and someday somebody will build for it. Uh, 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 and uh, three, two years back, we've been talking uh, uh, with GST actually, you know, becoming popular on why it is not being a critical factor for SME lending. And, and uh, six, seven months back when finance minister made it as a part of uh, India stack, all the GST data, now I see a lot of large banks saying, you know, you know, cash flow plays, GST based lending is what we have enabled now. So you can take cue from a lot of factors. Uh, so so that's that's where I said, you know, depending upon which office space where you are working from, it's extremely critical uh, that uh, you you take cue from your neighborhood and then figure out how do you uh, you know come up with your big ideas. And try to be a little bit futuristic, right? I mean, when Jules Verne could write journey to the center of the earth 100 years back, uh, we can at least uh, be a futuristic, uh, you know, kind of a visionary for the next five, seven years. You don't have to look much beyond that. Generating opportunities, as I said, right? You know, you look around, you get your cue, uh, identify a problem. Uh, and, you know, uh, with all the uncertainties and all of that, you try to, uh, you know, uh, rely on your passion to build collaborate with others and, and industry leaders. Uh, and then finally, you get your product up and running. Okay, so what are the final, you know, the, the, the classic pain points that you will you, you will, you will face is, uh, uh, you know, you need to know who is your customer. Okay, so one of the things is, um, how do you get appointments? How do you get your first sales pitch up and running? When do you go out? You know, there are a lot of process inefficiencies that happen. And, uh, you know, whether it is uh, in the marketing side and the sales side, product development side, uh, what you can afford to what you your aspiration is. Uh, so there are a lot of these problems, you know, which which we have, uh, you know, which will continue existing. Uh, and then, you know, you will always have this challenge if you have uh, one, one co-founder going out in the market and coming back. Um, asking for you to revise, uh, you know, to do some quick fixes to to do the first POC. There are a lot of unmet needs that you will have, uh, but you need to face all of these things. You need to bucket everything. Uh, you need to know which are, as I said very early in the slide, said prioritize what exactly you need to do, uh, and then be very, 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 very cautious of what you prioritize and then what you uh, you move up the bucket. Uh, we have seen when we moved a lot of things. Uh, unwanted stuff or uh, you know not so critical stuff up the bucket. Um, we had issues. We had issues in delivery, and and that's something that we keep uh, you know we keep uh, uh, focusing upon. Uh, so one of the things that will help you here is uh, I think uh, if you are a one man army, you need to rely on your own uh, acumen, your your own uh, uh, instincts. But if you have a team. Uh, daily hurdles uh, all the founders you know you need to sit on a daily basis and then keep talking uh, and talking and then figure out uh, uh, you know how do you optimize what what you can optimize where you can bring down inefficiencies where are the critical bottlenecks what you can solve for and then obviously uh, put that extended hours and then try to close those things So uh, uh, finally, after all this, uh, here we come to the uh, you know the one of the most meatiest part. 
uh, is is getting your business model right. This is extremely critical and somebody with enough gray hair on sales said, I'll tell you, uh, if you don't get this model right, nothing works. I've seen some of the uh, some of the best products perishing in the market is because they, they got the business model wrong. And you are, uh, so there are two things. One is uh, free POC, no POC. Uh, when do you do that? Uh, your first customer could be a very high paying customer. So is that the benchmark for your pricing? Um, how do you bundle it? How do you collaborate and then partner and then sell your product? There are a lot of options that are available, right? You need to be extremely creative. Uh, and this is where I see a lot of stubbornness happening uh, the, in the entrepreneurs of, uh, you know, of late what I've seen is they get carried away by the either initial success or, or, or the initial failures in a collaboration and then uh, become judgmental. Viable business model is extremely critical. Uh, the, and I can't be uh, emphasizing more on this. Uh, a viable business model, as you keep your eyes and ears open, you will know when to turn it into a profitable business model. A very, very minute change is, uh, uh, and this is again uh, from experience I'm talking is, when do you increase your price points? Uh, profit model uh, is fair and simple, right? Your top line and bottom line. Uh, expenses, you know, revenue minus expenses. A whole lot of stuff goes into it. Um, and one of the functions, key, fun, you know, key, key factors uh, to 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 change this tide is uh, your price points, your your unit pricing, your unit economics. Uh, this is more instinct. This is more gut call. Client to client, situation to situation, month to month. There is nothing more seasonal, cyclical than doing a pricing for any proposal that you are building throughout the year. This, they, they cannot be any more cyclical or seasonal element, uh, you know, than this in this business. So, so this is very, very critical. I think this is what you need to focus upon. So, uh, and some key factors here, assessment of market, identification of customer segments. Um, I mean, again, coming back to a case in point, right? A, a, you know, very, very basic video KYC. Are you attempting a big bank or are you attempting a small NBFC? Uh, where are you going? Which is your customer segment? And if you're a B, if you're a B to C, to which customer segment are you trying to sell? Um, uh, all of this becomes very, very important, and all of this weave into that story that makes sense when you actually go and try to sell. So this is where, if you remember our earlier sites, you know, uh, getting your pitch deck right. Uh, all of this, this all goes into that. And if you have all the ingredients, you know, just say, I remember one of the old Bollywood movies, right? The um, story, I mean, what is a movie, right? It's thoda comedy, thoda drama, thoda emotion, thoda fight, thoda this and all the songs and all of that, right? All of this, you know, assessment, customer segmentation, buyer's values, how much they value you and your, you know, your friendship and when do you see your first success coming into picture, distribution factor and all of this, right? And a five-year financial plan, all of this will actually make you build that right pitch. Uh, that what actually uh, will make the right story also. So this is something that I've covered and I'm happy to dwell on this slide for as long as any one of you has any questions. Uh, I'm also, I think, kind of running out of slides uh, because this is the end all and the all of any, any entrepreneurial journey getting your pricing structure right. You get this, you get your first sale, you're a successful entrepreneur. You falter here, all your efforts goes for a toss. So I mean, and this is the last slide. And as we are in the last five, seven minutes of the presentation, happy to take any questions. I hope you guys have given you feedback. No, no questions. I hope I made some sense or I was, that was too much of a nonsense. I'm not very sure. Uh, but yeah, if, if none, then uh, I'm here for the next couple of minutes. Uh, otherwise, we are, we are done pretty much with this session today. Yeah, I think, yeah, Rajiv. Mute myself. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, see guys. 
been a very nice session and quite informative and kind of a lot of thoughts resonate with my own thought as well uh what i would like to do is if you are available uh, okay i would like to get in touch with you offline Absolutely. and maybe exchange some few notes because i do see some scope for collaboration between our companies also happy to do that sir happy to do that yeah so i'll call you i'll call you after the session sure thank you thank you rajesh uh, anybody else all right thank you then thank you all thanks for joining